slightly different type of video today, as you can probably tell. I want to start a series of sorts. Before I get into what this thing is, I want to just talk about the why, which might make things a little tricky because you don't know what the thing is yet. But anyway, there are a few things that I'm very, very passionate about. I tend to get very obsessed with whatever thing it is that I'm currently into at that time. So thankfully that thing has been health for like the last six years now. I spend 99% of my time researching health, making content on health. I'm absolutely obsessed with nutrition. So that directly translated into things like cooking, which I'm really into, and also fermenting and fermentation, which I'm now very, very into as well. So the next kind of step from that was growing my own food. So over the last year and a half, probably, I've been very into growing my own food from home, an urban kind of garden setup, if you could call it that. I don't make up these terms, by the way, that's just what they are. And the more research that I've done into nutrition and the more that we keep seeing about the dangers of ultra processed food and the importance of good organic produce and the issues with carbon footprint and the impact of deforestation and the environment. And it's really tricky, I think, because you think you found this solution to either eating healthier or being more sustainable, but then you realize that really that solution isn't really a solution and there are always going to be trade-offs. So many of the fruits and veg we buy are so much lower in nutrients than they should be. They have potential chemicals, waxes for storing, etc. that might not be okay but also might be okay and you don't really know and it's an absolute ball ache just to wrap your head around and then you might even have heard about something like gut health and found out that gut health might be the next massive thing when it comes to health and even medicine the more that we discover about our gut microbiomes and the importance of maintaining a healthy gut microbiome and what we need to do to achieve that the more it becomes clear that it's probably a very very good idea to be growing our own food at home. So I'm gonna call this series something along the lines of grow your gut. We know that your gut microbiome isn't genetic. We've seen this in twin studies. We know that your gut microbiome is directly influenced by the foods you eat, your environment, your stress level, and all of these other factors across your lifetime. Now, when it comes to improving our gut health, we aren't actually aware of that many things that we can do. One of those things being fiber intake, which of course means increasing your intake of fruit and veg. An important component of this, it seems, is increasing the diversity of the fruit and veg you eat. The current recommendation is something like 30 different color fruit and vegetables per week. So it really is this variety that counts. Now, we also want to be going for fruits and veg that are darker in color. Generally speaking, these dark purple or dark red fruits are the ones that contain the most beneficial polyphenols and antioxidants that are so good for our overall health and particularly good for our guts. Some foods that are particularly good in this regard are beetroot, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, purple carrots. You can even get purple beans, purple peas. I'm growing some purple chilies here. And what you might now be thinking is, well, I can't find anything like that in my typical store. And that's exactly it, right? So you don't have access to this incredible diversity that fruit and veg actually is from your typical store. And further from that, the fruit and veg in your typical store is very likely sapped of key trace minerals micronutrients, phytonutrients, etc., that you would otherwise want and need for the healthiest gut microbiome possible. The angle I want to come at things with is the angle of health specifically. What specific foods can you dive into that are gonna have direct health benefits for you? Which ones are gonna be the easiest for you to grow at home? Which ones might not be so viable? There are fruits and veg out there that might not be that viable to grow from home, or at the very least, you have diminishing returns when growing them from home. For example, Hugh Richards conducted a small study of sorts where he measured the sugar content of foods, which tends to be quite a good indicator of their other nutrients when it comes to homegrown fruit and veg, for example. And he found that store-bought carrots actually had a higher amount than the ones that he grew. So maybe that would be an argument that you could direct your attention elsewhere when it comes to growing food from home, if you are limited to time and space, for example. So there's tons of considerations to be made. Now, another amazing benefit when it comes to growing your own food specifically is that interacting with the leaves and soil has actually been shown to have a direct benefit to your gut microbiome. Now, we know that everything you've ever interacted with has likely had some kind of impact on your gut. The type of locations you've been in the world, the different types of environments you've been in, soil, the food you touch, the bacteria you're exposed to, 
all can have a direct benefit or impact to your gut microbiome. And it becomes clearer now that the more diverse your gut microbiome, the better. Therefore, interacting with these things might have an incredible benefit for you. And we can see this even further in some of the most popular blue zones in the world. Blue zones being places in the world with a very high concentration of centenarians. So people that live to the age of 100 or even older. Okinawa is a very famous one. And the amazing thing about the residents of Okinawa is that they all garden. They all grow their own food. And you see these 100 year old ladies doing a perfect squat while digging up their purple sweet potato for dinner. It's absolutely amazing. So there's a very likely benefit of growing your own food specifically and longevity, i.e. how long you're going to live. Both from the health side, so gut microbiome, maybe you're getting more vitamins and minerals from growing your own food, less pesticides, if pesticides do actually have an effect on our health long term. It's very hard to tell at this stage. But then you also have the mental health side of things, which the more we understand about this, the more we understand that your mental health is directly correlated with how long you live. And we can see that with things like gardening, people's desire to live is much higher. There are studies, and I'll try and find a study to link it, where they have given old people plants to take care of. And the process and responsibility of taking care of the plant increases their will to live effectively and their drive for life and their quality of life. Growing your own food gives you a sense of time, it gives you a sense of purpose that I imagine has a humongous benefit for potentially lonely old people. So when you put these pieces of the puzzle together and you see that store-bought food might have lower micronutrients, it might have more chemicals, things you might not want to eat. Ultra processed food is everywhere. The modern diet is the worst it has ever been, which is having all kinds of pretty horrific negative health outcomes across the world. You see that farming is in the worst way it's ever been with appalling amounts of deforestation across the world, huge carbon footprints, monoculture, all of the worst practices that we could possibly do for growing food for the world. We know that organic or homegrown foods might very well contain far more micronutrients and important phytonutrients than you'd otherwise get from food from a store. We can see these direct links between increasing our fruit and veg intake, specifically organic, micronutrient dense and dark, colorful fruit and veg intake that you might not otherwise be able to find at a store. You can see the links with those foods and amazing gut microbiome benefits. And we know now that good gut health means a better mood, better immunity, better chances of longevity as well, better overall health, the list goes on. And even further from this, we know that the bacteria we're exposed to actually might improve our gut microbiome. So interacting with fruits and veg and being outside in the garden might also be very beneficial for our guts. We can see that in some of the biggest blue zones in the world that a common trend is that they grow their own food. They have a sense of time. They have a sense of responsibility and care. And maybe they get further health benefits from the food they grow themselves. And the more we realize the need for more sustainable methods for growing food, Food, the more we realize why aren't we just using this space that, that lots of people have access to to grow their own food from home and I know the first thing you're thinking now is oh, I haven't got enough time to do that now this is pretty much exactly why I'm making these videos I want to stress that it doesn't take too much time to grow your own food it is minimal effort it does take a little bit of time to start things up but once they're going it's the easiest thing in the world so this is why I want to make these videos. I want to show you that you can grow food from home, even if you live a very busy lifestyle. I want to directly show you the health benefits of growing food from home, of which it seems pretty clear that there are hundreds of benefits to doing this. I want to walk you through how to do it, which fruits and vegetables are best grown from home for more benefits for higher returns, let's say. I do think that there is so much wasted space in people's gardens. You can grow a lot of food in very little space and amazing food as well that you wouldn't see anywhere else. I think it's very important for people to get into doing things like this. Not that I think gardening has a negative stigma per se, but I think people generally, especially my generation, might turn their nose up to it a little bit. There is nothing wrong with getting into something, growing some food from home, enjoying yourself while you do it, and then enjoying amazing food and amazing health as the outcome. So welcome to this new series. I'll be posting this type of content every few weeks. We'll follow along with things that I grow. I'll walk you through all the best food that you can grow from home, the direct health benefits of growing specific foods, and how to manage it around your current lifestyle, and how to grow an amazing gut, improve your gut microbiome, improve your health, and live a better life as a result.